Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's conversation where we are here to discuss the growing acceptance of online learning and how to make the most out of hybrid learning for your child as Hong Kong moves forward into the new normal. As schools get ready for in-person classes to resume in April, providers of online learning classes from mathematics to debating have reported a surge in inquiries and enrollment. Many parents have become accustomed to online learning now and recognize that such education approaches complement in-person classes and courses. But much is still unknown in such a hybrid learning mode and best practices to help children learn and thrive are still being developed and tested. Today we have with us Jennifer Chin, the founder of Wizpa, an online marketing platform for learning courses and a parent who advocates for a balanced combination of virtual and in-person classes for students. And Wendy Wong Jones, the founder of an online business called Cream and Sprinkle and the parent of two children attending international schools in Hong Kong. So first, I want to begin with Jennifer. Uh, and just initially, uh, could you tell us a little bit about what WizPa is, uh, but then how you have seen online learning change since its introduction uh, to the mainstream education space? Thank you, Clark. Thank you for the introduction. So just a quick background about myself. I'm Jennifer Chin, a founder of whisper.com. I've been running my company for close to eight years now. I'm also a parent of three kids, uh, two of which are teenagers uh, currently in U.S. boarding school, and then a six-year-old kid who is an international school in Hong Kong. So with Whisper, we are an online parenting platform to make things easier, to help parents look for kids' activities and also education trends in Hong Kong. We organize a lot of education events. Uh, we do provide online marketing services and also supply an online cloud-based operating system to education centers and international schools. So lovely to meet everyone today. Um, what I found, uh, following up with the first question that you have, Clark, over there, in terms of the online learning, um, since COVID uh, started three years ago, I'm uh, beginning to see that most parents are uh, more likely to accept online learning. Of course, within the first year, there's a lot of people who are so used to live learning when it switched to uh, online where everything has to shut, schools have to close, centers have to close. Some parents were a little reluctant to adapt to online learning. But as we go over time, instead of stopping the kids' education, more and more parents are more accepting of online learning and to embrace it, to at least keep the education going for our kids at home. Um, so that's sort of the trend we're seeing and also with the providers like education centers, they were so used to running live classes, in-person classes all along. Now they're actually forced to think forward and to adapt and to create an online curriculum that actually helps kids continue learning at home. Also, and uh, basically engage teachers to and even help them pivot to teach better online as well. So that is sort of the trend I'm seeing in the uh, education space, especially in the last two, three years. Thanks, Jennifer. And then, uh, Wendy, could you tell us a bit about um, uh, Cream and Sprinkle? I know it's, it includes like DIY activity kits uh, for kids, which I, I assume can take place from home, which uh, obviously is not technically online learning. But uh, it's, you know, there's, there's, I'm sure, some transferable things that, that have some similarities there. So I, I'd be interested to hear what you have seen uh, as, as online learning has become more mainstream uh, in the education space and the general activity space as it is. Okay. Um, good morning, Clark. Good morning, um, Jennifer. Thanks for having me um, today in this event. Um, so um, I am Wendy. Um, I run uh, Cream and Sprinkle. Cream and Sprinkle was found um, as of May 2021. Um, it was not because of COVID that um, the business came about, but it was because of our backgrounds that we decided to launch the business. Um, so I am a mother of two boys, um, age six and 11, and they go to two different international schools. Um, with regards to your question on the um, DIY um, kids that we do, is um, basically a very food-based, dessert-based. I think the um, whole idea behind it was also to provide um, children with a sensory sort of like, um, you know, experience, um, having been in such a virtual sort of like environment these days. So I think definitely, you know, the online learning has, um, has been a um, new, you know, new environment for everyone to sort of like, you know, adapt to. 
And I think it's definitely become more streamlined and efficient. I think right down from the teachers and even to how the kids are actually adapting to this um, changing environment. And I think that is, um, would I say that it's the best? Um, it's probably not. But I think, you know, we are all trying to, you know, just um, make the best out of the situations that we are in at this point in time. So um, I guess that's, yeah, that's where um, I stand on this. Thanks, Wendy. So you, you mentioned it's not the best, and I, I would have to imagine a vast majority of parents would be in agreement with you on that. Uh, I'm sure there, of course, are, are many positives that have come, uh, especially as uh, people continue learning. But I do want to ask uh, each of you, I'll start with, with Wendy here uh, as well, since we're on that thread. Uh, you know, what are some of the um, you know, most poignant weaknesses that you've seen in the way virtual classes are being run? And, you know, in, in your personal view, uh, how do you think they could be improved, those those weaknesses? Look, I mean, I think it's about um, attention. It's, a, it's, it's definitely attention span. And I think in the early days, um, especially with my um, older child, who was probably nine when this all started, it... Um, it was a very distracting time <laughs> on online for him. You know, it's, it's, I think, pushing the boundaries as well. It's like all of a sudden, you know, from a physical learning space into a, you know, online learning space where, you know, they are quite into their gaming, especially at the age, at the age group. So, you know, the temptation was there to obviously try and do a bit of gaming, try and watch a bit of YouTubing and what have you not. So I think that is definitely one of the major weakness. Um, truth be told, is that you know I've also tried sitting in one of those sessions myself, and to maintain focus, I mean even as an adult, I think it's quite challenging. So I can't like in retrospect to demand that of children, you know, doing that for you know continuously for like you know two three hours straight. I think that's really really hard. Um, yeah, so that's definitely one of the major weakness. That um, that is with online learning. I I wonder just from it, that experience. That's interesting that you you know you sat down uh, you know with them as well. I think that's obviously a very valuable thing to do. do in your mind, is there any way that you could see this being improved? I I guess a, particularly in the circumstances where there's not really any choice in the matter other than to have online learning for the time being. Is there any way to, that you can imagine improvements just when when it comes to keeping people's attention span? <laughs> that is a big question. I mean, you know, I mean, it all depends on the child as well, right? I, I, I find I tend to find that girls thrive better, only because I think you know nature has made us so to be, to be more um, focused. Um, I don't know, like you know, um, we've got better attention span. But I think with the boys, I think you know, being being at that age as well, it's um, it's definitely a challenge, you know. Um, I mean, and I think it's a lot to do with personality of the of the child as well. Some kids, you know, ad, you know, just are more adept to it as compared to others. So I've got two boys, and I and I can see the difference between the two. My younger one tends to be able to stay focused. My older one tends to, you know, drift in and out. So I think a lot of it is also personality driven, um, nature, um, some things that you can't really change. You know, and but it is hard, you know, trying to stay focused online for a long period of time. Right. Perhaps online practitioners could uh, perhaps start making more of an effort toward, uh, you know, specifically understanding the personality of each student, uh, you know, that they are um, trying to teach. Uh, maybe that's a thread that we could go down. But Jennifer, I'd turn to you then. What are some of the weaknesses that you have seen uh, and, you know, how might those be improved as well? Yeah, I think um, uh, going by the age group, starting with the youngest kids, like kids who are seven years old and below, I think that whole, you know, physical, social interaction, which you can actually have in live classes are very important for young kids. So at the moment, by switching everything online, um, I just feel like with the younger kids, especially with my six-year-old, the social skills, the communication skills, the interaction with their peers, with the teachers, it's kind of lacking because on Zoom, Zoom classes, you're probably allowed to speak one person at a time. 
um, they can't quite reach out to play with their friends or if they have an issue, they want to ask a question in, you know, immediately, they could do that on Zoom. You know, they've got to use the little icon, put up the hand and then you'd be called upon and then you can ask your question. And then as for the older kids, obviously, uh, with my teenagers, like online learning, it's easier for them to manage because they can manage their laptops, they know their time schedule and everything. But when it comes to, you know, experiments, like physical experiments you need, like in science classes, right, or teamwork, or where they sit down and do project works, it's harder to do so online, right? Can you imagine how can you try and run a physics experiment online? You don't have the, the ingredients with you. You don't have the props with you. It's all in school. So there are a lot of things that are like physical experiments, practical learning. They've kind of become theoretical learning. So of which kids like teenagers have to search online, search online for the results. So it's not so impactful when they're learning because a lot of times when you learn, when you do the practical work, you learn a lot better. You can remember things better. So I kind of see like these sort of weaknesses. Um, it's not perfect, but at the moment we're trying to do our best with online learning. And I think the kids are also doing their best trying to absorb as much as they can online, despite all the distractions, despite a bit of shortfall here and there. Um, of course, in terms of trying to improve online learning, um, I think for the younger kids, what we've seen, or at least what I've observed uh, with teachers in the school, is they try to gamify the lesson a little bit, make it a little more interesting, you know, like a, a, a turning wheel or some cartoon characters or some funny voices, just to hold on to the focus and the attention of the kids during the whole entire class. Um, and then so I feel teachers are trying their, their best to try and make it interesting to learn online for kids, especially the younger kids. So these are some of the solutions I've seen, like schools are trying their best um, to ensure that, you know, kids are still, you know, interested in learning, curious in learning, despite it's being done online. Thanks, Jennifer. So now what, what advice might you have or, you know, your, in your personal experience on ways that you have coped uh, in overcoming, you know, some of these concerns? Obviously, uh, you know, there's there's not much you can do about uh, the fact that they can't physically get their hands on a science experiment. But let's just say, you know, um, wh whether it's the scenario where, you know, you're working from home, they're learning from home at the same time, they're losing their attention span, whatever it may be. You know, what are some of the things that you have done to cope with some of these challenges and really just try to make the best out of, you know, the situation that there's really nothing you can do much about for the time being? I think uh, one of the things is to be open-minded. You know, you got to work with the school, work with the teachers. Uh, I do see that classes, they used to be in the in-person classes, they'll be an hour long, but now it's cut down to 20 minutes. So in that way, it sort of helps with the younger kids because the attention span is it's quite short online. Um, so I, I think that helps as well, you know, working with the school. And then also, um, I have to say, you know, being at home now that I'm working from home, I'm quite, you know, quite like sitting probably like three, four meters from my, my child as he's doing online, making sure, hey, you know, give him a prop, give him a reminder. Occasionally, are you paying attention? Do you know what's going on in class? So that sort of helps in a way as a parent, you know, trying to, to, to support the kid while he's doing online learning. Uh, for the older kids, the teenagers, um, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, I mean, they run with their schedule, they have uh, their own, they make their own decisions, but it's also good to always be re be mindful, telling the older kids, like, you know, take a break, you know, take a break, rest your eyes, or like, you know, go try and do something else, or, um, you know, just to just do some household chores, or go watch TV or something, whereby, because for the older kids, they do tend to spend a much longer time on the computer online learning, uh, just so because their age, their, their focus should be better. But I think they also feel very tired that way. And then so uh, as a parent, we try to be supportive at home, reminding them to have a balance of screen time and off screen time, uh, spending more time doing something else in the house, for example, so that they can have some time off or take a break. Um, so I, I guess as a parent, um, I'm here to be supportive. And if they're stuck with work, I try my best to help them. Uh, just because the access to teachers just limited, right, online. Thanks. And and Wendy, same question to you. What what uh, ways have you uh, tried to cope with uh, these situations uh, with with your children? And uh, any advice you can share with parents in that realm? 
I think over the last um, three years, you know, um, Jennifer and I have been through a lot of similar journeys. So I concur with a lot of points that she has said. Um, I mean, the schools have been very encouraging as well. So, you know, um, in, you know, with um, the fact that if we wanted to take the child, you know, for a time out, it's like just to recharge, you know, they're very, very um, supportive of that, which we really appreciate because there are days where, um, you know, everyone's just had it. <laughs> It's, you know, it's just sort of like just time to just walk away from this whole environment because we're all stuck at home as well. So just imagine having to do this for a long period of time. So I'm I would say, you know, um, children are still children. You know, they're only with us for this period of time. We are only parents at this point in time. I think it's also important to remember the parent child relationship. And to actually take time out, spend, you know, outdoors with them or do something, you know, that's just give them an off day every now and then. I think that was my way of um, coping with, you know, tension build up at times. So that would be um, what I have. I mean, that is what I have done. Uh, yes. Yeah, that that's great. Thanks. I, I think that's that's great advice. So I'm I'm gonna just ask ask you guys one more one more question here, a forward looking question. Um, you know, I, I think it's it's it, at this point, online learning is probably here to stay in some fashion. Uh, I I think everyone would concur. It's certainly not going to replace uh, in person learning. I don't think it will ever do that. But it is here to stay. There's businesses that have boomed because of it, and I don't think they're going to go away anytime soon. So with that uh, in your mind, um, you know what what can online education practitioners do uh, as in moving forward? In your view, what wish what do you wish they might have done, or the learnings that you wish they uh, are able to take in that they can implement moving forward uh, that can best complement uh, in-person learning. So, that, uh, you know, where, where it's somewhat of a hybrid, um, you know, just what are your thoughts on that? What, you know, what suggestions might you have to online learning co companies or, or schools who are, are forced uh, to implement online learning in the future? Um, any final thoughts that you have about that on how the situation can be improved and, you know, any, any positives that you can see coming from that? Uh, when do we can start with you with that? With me? I think it should be Jennifer. You should okay, be Jennifer, answering that question. I think <laughs> that you go ahead because that's in your realm. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I do agree that I don't think online learning can replace in-person learning uh, because we are human beings. In-person le learning is so important, especially for the development of a child. Because not only are they, you know, learning new things like, you know, or, you know, subjects or, you know, learning a new skill, but that whole point of communication and interaction with another person is very important, right? Interacting with your peers, interacting with your teachers, uh, interacting with another kid who's older or a subject teacher or a staff in school. So all this is also part of like lifelong learning skills and communication is so important as for us as human beings and then for a kid they have to start develop developing this as they grow older so i do agree i think in-person learning is still very important and by far still most effective in terms of a child's education now coming back to the question where you say how do you think like you know uh learning centers who've now come up with an online curriculum or even just brand new platforms, you know, online learning platforms that came up. I've seen so many of them came up in the last two, three years. Um, how can they improve the, the curriculum? I think it has to do with the content because the new generation now is all about content. They watch everything on YouTube. They watch everything on social media. The quality of the content is very important. And how, what sort of techniques, what sort of strategy you use to catch that attention of the child, whether it's a two-year-old kid, to a teenager, and if they're actually learning effectively, right? There, there is a lot of new platforms out there. And sometimes, you know, either, you know, the time of the content, if it's, that's too long, people kind of doze off or they drop off. If it's too short, maybe parents don't feel like, oh, they're getting a quality learning. It's not in-depth enough. Maybe I would not subscribe. So that's actually a lot of kind of trial and error, I feel, especially with a lot of the new online platforms that came up in the last two years, how do they tweak it to make sure the education content is delivered at the highest quality, 
You know, it's difficult to match in-person learning, but with online, can you actually achieve that effective learning for the child, right? So that's a big question, right? So how can they improve? I think what I'm seeing right now is a lot of online platform are kind of using games or they kind of gamify the content or they put beautiful animation on it. Um, but how much of that is being absorbed by the child? I feel like it's kind of like passive learning, right? It's sitting in front of a screen. They're watching a, a online content. Are they actually absorbing it? How is it different from watching TV? How much do you absorb, right? Versus someone who's learning in person, doing the practical work and interacting with their peers that part of it is definitely a lot more effective, I feel, versus just sitting there watching an online content and, and be passive learning. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know if that kind of answers your question. And then some of the other like uh, online platforms I've come across, um, they do involve a teacher. You know, instead of just recorded video content, they do involve a teacher doing a Zoom one to one or it could be a Zoom to a group class. That's also definitely a little bit better because you allow some interaction between teacher and child through the online, through the computer, right? So at least the child can ask a question, the teacher can answer, or they can actually do some activity together. So that way, I think it's a little bit better than just pure uh, recorded video online learning. Yeah. Um, so I think... How would I say uh, if it's going to be a hybrid learning going forward, I still feel that the emphasis is more on in-person. You may say, let's say six, uh, 70, 80 percent in-person learning with school. And then maybe when the child goes home, they can have some online learning to complement or like help them revise what they've done in school. That's possible. Um, and I also feel that the education sector now, whether it's education center or schools, they will always have this online cur curriculum on hand just in case. Uh, things have to shut again. I don't know if it's, you know, uh, the sixth wave or could it be another um, virus in the future? And when kids can go to school or go to cent or education centers, um, all the providers will already have an online curriculum at hand where they can switch to immediately when things shut down. So this is definitely the trend there. People have the backup when they need it. Thanks, Jennifer. That's great. Uh, gamification and being proactive rather than reactive. I, I, I would have to agree on that. So I, that's really uh, all that I have for you guys. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Wendy, for uh, taking the time out to share your thoughts with us. And thank you for everyone watching. Uh, be sure to look into Wispa and Cream and Sprinkle. Uh, and again, thanks, everyone, for joining. And we look forward to welcoming you back next time. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you, Clark. Clark. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. you, thank you Wendy. Bye. Bye.